my name is Juan Rojas, and uh, I'm I'm from Sonsonate, which is located uh, in the southwest of El Salvador. Um, I I have a a history with um, permaculture that is dated back to 1990. But for me to to come in touch with permaculture, I needed to go through a nightmare due to the war. So um, I was in the early 80s uh, in, 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 at the National University I was studying. I was, uh, as any young guy, thinking you know, in a promising future and having a car and you know, a nuclear family and all that. However, um, the uh, war broke on um, January 81. And then I, um, together with hundreds of students from the university, uh, needed to go out and um, work or, or uh, getting away from the country or joining the guerrilla, the revolutionary people. Because a lot of our um, student uh, comrades, they, they, they joined the guerrilla. They uh, left the city and joined the, the farmers and the um, peasants and uh, all these uh, workers who uh, came to these hills, Guasapa Hills, or Morazan, Chalatenango, that mountain over there, Chalatenango. That way is Morazan and this way is Guasapa. And some people remain in the city as urban guerrillas. So I, I took the decision to join the um, rank and file workers. So I work um, underground, um, trying to um, destabilize the uh, company that I work with. So we were trying to, to get better conditions and um, better improvement on, on, the, on the money. However, um, um, in those days, uh, the unions were what we call white unions. So they were part of the, the system. They were members of the military uh, people in power. So that's why I, I, I refer that I was working on destabilizing these unions, trying to get a, a proper uh, representation of the workers. And that led, led me to have uh, to become a target for the death cause. So luckily I left before they could catch me. So I fled to Guatemala and then eventually to Mexico. And in Mexico I was... Um, um, I lived there for four years until I became also in trouble with the immigration authorities. Because they say that I was as well, um, meddling in internal politics. Due to my uh, involvement with political parties and uh, social sectors of the Mexican society, they were interested in helping uh, our struggle here. So once I got uh, that um, uh, notice from the immigration authorities to leave the country or to be deported, I, um, I went to um, the, the UN High Commission for Refugees body in the capital city of Mexico and seek refuge there. So I became a political refugee under their um, protection. They uh, advised me that there were countries um, providing um, protection, protective grounds for refugees. So I, uh, I ended up in Australia. And I spent nine years in Australia working as a normal citizen, um, working on the industry and um, also organizing uh, refugees, Salvadoran immigrants there, or organizing uh, solidarity groups uh, from Australia with El Salvador groups. Um, so I became active again with them, but also I was working, you know, earning my daily bread. 
Um, so when the war was over, I'm talking about 18, 1989, when the, uh, peace, the, the peace accords started, the process started in Costa Rica. So then we figured out that the war was coming to an end, that they were, there was going to be a truce or ceasefire or something that will end up with a, a negotiation. So um, I decided to, um, to um, look for a way in where I could help with the reconstruction, post-war reconstruction. Um, and then I became uh, aware that uh, there were a lot of initiatives in Australia of people working on different uh, aspects of sustainability, people living on, on um, um, villages, uh, alternative lifestyle, um, some people um, working on um, developing uh, rubbish dumping sites in the city. Uh, some friends were members of uh, networks of sea savers networks or trees or activists. So then I, I, I became interested in what could be relevant to our situation here. And permaculture came handy because uh, I thought that this, this was a very comprehensive approach to uh, post-war reconstruction um, development. So I learned um, in the temperate climate in Melbourne, in the city, in the landscapes that is the um, tenants associations had, so these homeless people or poor people in Australia, they, they they have this uh, opportunity to live in these tenant associations, um, settlement in the big cities. Uh, so I, I was working there with um, permaculture, trying to develop some alternatives for the elderly and um, and youth and uh, unemployed people. And then eventually I went to Queensland to uh, learn uh, subtropical permaculture in crystal waters. And then I had the opportunity to uh, join Bill Mollison in the Australian Institute of Permaculture in Targum. So I spent time with him there and um, after that I, I was desperate to come back. It was 1993. So I made my journey back to the country with my own savings and um, one way fare no return ticket. So I was really um, uh, eager to um, prove myself that I could work in the land. So I came and joined these people in Morasan, some people that are members of this institute, founders of this institute too. So I joined them and uh, I learned with them for three years. I was a volunteer like these people uh, to learn how they work the land. They were just farmers, but with a lot of uh, knowledge, traditional knowledge. So after that I, I felt that I was empowered by them, plus the permaculture experience. And then together with them we were working on this uh, methodology that is pretty common here and in some other parts of the world, which is a uh, farmer to farmer methodology. And that how everything started. So, ten years later, or seven years later, um, the institute became a, a reality with the help of Karen Ingwood from England.